No matter what type of photo editing you're doing, I'm sure you've had to use a tone curve at some point along the way. Whether you're using Lightroom, Photoshop, or other types of photo editing software, the tone curve is a staple in every program. Now, the reason for this is that it's such a powerful tool, but you can only take full advantage of it if you truly know how to use it. So in this tutorial, I wanna break down everything you need to know about using the tone curve so you can master it more effectively and get your photos to look exactly how you want them to. My name is Brendan from BeWillCreative.com where we love to talk about photography and photo editing. And one of the most important tools in photo editing is the tone curve. Now, if you've watched other tutorials on this channel, you know how much I love to use the tone curve in my own workflow. And it's an amazing tool for adding creative contrast beyond the regular highlights and shadow sliders in the basic panel of Lightroom. The way the tone curve works is you can manually adjust specific exposure ranges within your photo and you have a lot more control rather than being limited to a specific slider. Beyond just exposure adjustments, you can also add interesting color adjustments by directly affecting the red, green, and blue channels of your curve. Now we're going to talk about all that stuff and what that means in this video, but before we get started, make sure to hit that like button down below if you learned something today. And with that, let's hop into Lightroom and get started. Before we go and use the tone curve with a real image, the easiest way to understand what it's actually doing is by using a gradient like this. In this gradient, we have every exposure range from our darkest darks to our whitest whites, or the shadows to the highlights, if you wanna talk about it like that. Now to find the tone curve in Lightroom, it's here within the develop module, and then down here in the tone curve panel. And there are two different types of tone curves that you can work with. The first one is a region curve, as you see here, and the second one is the linear curve which is this option here. Let's first talk about the region curve as it's a little bit more simple to understand. With this version of the tone curve, we have all of our exposure ranges broken down into sliders. If I go and adjust the shadows, notice how they only are affected in the bottom left corner of the curve. Everything else within the curve remains untouched. If I go to the highlights, now it is only affecting the upper right corner of the curve and nothing else is being affected below it. What this actually represents is your exposure between all of the exposure ranges. Broken up by this grid, as you see here, the first column is shadows, the second column is darks, and the third column is lights, while the final column is highlights. So depending on which slider you want to adjust, you'll be affecting a different section of the curve, which you can identify easily by the grid in the background there. Now, when you're going and using the linear curve, things are a little bit different. Because there are no parameters, you will adjust more than one specific area. First of all, to adjust the linear tone curve, you just click on it to add an anchor point like so, and then you can drag up to lighten, or down to darken in that area. But notice how as I move this anchor point, both the highlights on the right side and the darks on the left side also get adjusted as I move this anchor point. So that's where things get a little bit different with the linear curve. Essentially how this curve works is that you can create different anchor points throughout the curve so that you can manually edit different exposure ranges throughout your photo. So for example, just so things are easy, I've now set up an anchor point in all of the exposure ranges. This one is the darks, this one is the midtones, and this one is the highlights. If I click on the midtones and I drag that up to brighten, notice how on my gradient only the center area gets brightened, and that's the midtone exposure range. If I drag that down to darken, the same thing is going to happen only in that center area. The reason the other parts of our curve aren't moving is because we've created these anchor points around here. Now you can add as many anchor points as you would like, and it's these anchor points and where you place them that actually helps to create creative contrast throughout your photo. Now you might be wondering what creative contrast even means, but we'll talk about that later on when we actually are using this with a photo. Now double clicking to get rid of all of those custom anchor points that I just added, we now are left with two default anchor points, one up here and one down here. This one up here represents the highlights, and if I go and drag this down, it starts to darken out the highlights, and if I go all the way down, my image is now black. Now the opposite is true, if I drag the other way, now everything is white. Going to the bottom anchor point, this does a lot of the same thing, but this time for the shadows. So if I drag this up, everything is going to be lightened in those dark areas, so the entire gradient becomes white. 
or if I drag it across like this, everything is going to become dark and it's gonna get rid of those bright highlight areas. Now you're not really gonna find yourself doing any drastic adjustments like that, but it helps to visualize what's actually going on when you're using the tone curve. You can create contrast with the tone curve by using different anchor points throughout the exposure ranges. And how contrast works is that you're darkening one area and brightening another. That's what contrast is, dark shadows, brighter highlights. So since that's what contrast actually is, I can click to add an anchor point in the shadows, drag that down to darken, and then I can add another one in the highlights, click and drag up to brighten, and this is a standard S-curve, which is basically contrast. This is adding contrast to your photo, a lot like the contrast slider might do here in the basic panel. The difference here, however, is you can better refine exactly how and where that contrast is being applied, because for example, say I wanted to add something to the midtones, I could add a separate anchor point in the middle and adjust that as necessary. So this is super useful when you're actually editing a real photo and not a gradient like we're doing in this example currently. Now that you have a general understanding of the exposure and the tone curve, let's talk about adding some colors in. Now up here at the top, you notice how we have a red, green, and blue circle. Those indicate your RGB channels, which basically make up all the colors in your photo. With these different options, you can directly edit those color channels to change some of the hues in your photo. For example, notice how in the reds channel, I have red on this side and cyan on that side. So how this works is if I went and dragged up in the midtones, I'm gonna be adding red as I drag up. And then as I drag down, I'm gonna be adding cyan, which is the opposite color of red. The same idea works for the other color channels. If I go to green, I'm gonna either add green by going up or I'm gonna add magenta, which is the opposite color if I go down. Same with blue, I'll either add blue or I'll add yellow, which is again, the opposite color. Now, just by itself, what we just did there, it doesn't really seem that useful for editing colors, but where this comes handy is you can add specific colors to your shadows or your highlights or even your midtones, depending on what you're into. So for example, since I'm in the blue channel here, let's say I wanna add some blue tones to the dark areas of my image. Well, what I could do is start by lifting this black point and that's gonna change the darkest color in my gradient to favor a more blue hue from the beginning because we've just shifted it towards the blue color. If I click on the shadows, I can now add a little bit more blue, this time in the slightly less dark areas, and now we're really adding a lot of blue. So what if we now only want that blue to be affecting our shadows and not the midtones or the highlights as much? Well then we can add another anchor point, click in the middle here, drag it down, and that's gonna bring it back to center and balance things out a little bit more so now our blue adjustment is only taking place in the shadows. Now let's say we want to add some green to the highlights, we can go and do the opposite thing. Clicking on that highlights area, I'll drag that up to add some green in there. But since I don't want it to spill into my shadows, I'll just go down to my midtones area and I'll drag that down to set it back to its normal position. Now we have added green to our highlights and we have blue in our shadows. And this is essentially how color grading works is you're adding one type of tone to parts of your photo depending on the exposure range. And when you're using the tone curve, it's so easy to just add anchor points and manually change where the colors are being put depending on the brightness levels in your image. So now I trust that you're getting the idea of how this works with a gradient because you can see literally how it's affecting one exposure range and not another. Now with all that in our heads, let's go and use this adjustment with a real photo. Now with our tone curve, let's go and edit this image from scratch. Since we can adjust the exposure and color all in one place here, the tone curve can technically serve as a complete solution to your photo editing needs if you wanted. So that's why it's such a powerful and helpful tool to learn about. To start things off, we obviously need to brighten some of this image and to make things easy for us, using our region curve, we can adjust all of those using sliders rather than adding manual anchor points. So obviously we need to brighten up those shadows in the dark areas. So I'm gonna lift that up like so, and I'll lift up the darks as well. From there, I'll increase the lights and the highlights just so things are generally brighter than they were before. Now that we've adjusted our region curve, we can go and edit our linear curve separately. So although we've created some adjustments here, we're basically starting fresh with our linear curve so we can start adding some more creative contrast in here. Now the first thing I'd like to do is just brighten the entire photo. So I'm gonna click in the midtones and drag up to brighten. I'm gonna drag this up until I'm happy with the general exposure of things in the midtones. Now obviously this is looking a little bit flat, so let's go and darken down some of the shadows. I'll click in the shadows range, 
drag that down like so to bring back some contrast, but I'm not gonna go all the way back to the starting point because that's a little bit too dark. So I'm gonna keep it somewhere around here for now. Lastly, I wanna bring back that detail in the sky over here. So I'm gonna click on the highlights and then drag that down like so. And that's gonna bring back that detail in the sky. You can play around with this until you find something that you're happy with, but it's really as easy as just adding a few anchor points and playing around with them in the different exposure ranges to dial in the exact brightening adjustments you're looking for. Now that I'm happy with our brightening adjustments, let's turn that on and off to see the difference that we just made, all only using the tone curve, no other adjustments. Let's go and start to add some color into this. Now I'd love to make this look a little bit more sunset-y, so let's start with our reds, and we're gonna add some red and yellow hues in here throughout these different color channels. Starting with our reds, of course, I'm gonna click in the midtones and drag up to add red throughout the entire photo. Now I mostly want this to take place in the shadowy areas. I don't want my sky to get too red, so I'm gonna click in the highlights, maybe a little closer to the midtones, and just drag down like so. So that means that the red color is gonna be in these dark areas, but it's not gonna be so much in the sky. Next, we'll go to our greens, and I want to get rid of some of that purple that's up in the sky. So in the highlights, which are those bright tones here, I'm gonna click and drag up to add a bit of green in there. And then I'll just drag down in the mid-tones area so that I'm correcting it back to normal so that there's not green throughout my entire photo. Now going to the blues, we're gonna add some yellows to the overall image. In the mid-tones, dragging down to add some yellow. But I might not want that to happen throughout the whole photo, so I'll just drag this up to add a bit of blue to the other areas in the image. And now, just like that, we've added some color adjustments really quickly to this photo. Again, turning that on and off, Look at that big difference that we've made. We've now added some cool color adjustments in there as well as adjusted the exposure overall, all with one single tool just by adding some anchor points. Now besides general contrast, you can also use this adjustment to create matte looks in your photo. So for example, I can click in this bottom corner and drag that up. And what that is gonna do is brighten the darkest point in my photo. So it's gonna give it more of a gray look. So see how all those shadows kind of become flat looking? You can easily create that by just dragging up that bottom point of your shadows. I talk about this a lot in other tutorials where we just go through creating certain editing styles, but it's also helpful to know when you're learning how to use the tone curve in Lightroom as well. Now, obviously there's still a lot that you could do with this photo that all of these other tools in Lightroom are gonna be useful for, but I just wanted to prove to you how much you can really do with the tone curve without having to do a lot of other work. The tone curve is one of my favorite tools in Lightroom and it's easy to see why after you start to see how powerful it is. So now that you know how to use the tone curve a little bit better, I'll be surprised if you don't start using this all the time in your photo editing workflow. You can use it for exposure and color adjustments, making it the perfect all-in-one tool to accompany other settings within your editing program. Now, if you enjoyed today's tutorial, then make sure to hit that like button down below, and also consider subscribing to stay up to date with more tutorials just like today. Anyways, that's all I have for you for now. Again, my name's Brendan from bewillcreative.com, and I'll catch you back here next time for another new tutorial. See you then.